It is seven o'clock. It's seven o'clock and uh, a little bit of excitement happened in the early lab because you know I think I messed up one of the microcode of one of the instructions. So what we'll do now is to figure out why it is not working and how to fix it because it's, this is a great way to illustrate or demonstrate uh, the architecture itself and also the process of developing microcode for the processor. So let's go ahead. So this is, most people will feel kind of not so good, you know, when you know, they discover a problem. To me, it is interesting because it is a puzzle to be solved. <laughs> Even if it is my own fault, okay, it is still a puzzle to be solved. It is, doesn't matter whose fault it is, you know, to me it's just a puzzle. All right, so what we'll do is we're going to take a look at this code. Um, I'll, I'll delete the rest, the, the portion that does not really matter, which is this portion. And I always do not really like why this part is kind of shaded a little bit. So we will get rid of all the shading and reset that because it just doesn't look right you know, when it's partially shaded. Um, all right, so we'll take a look at this program. Um, the first line, you know, just you know, loads A with uh, a value of 255, which is in decibel. So 255, by the way, is also all ones, okay, as a A bit number. The second line, line two, is going to load register B with a zero, okay, so all zeros. And then line three is going to subtract a zero from register uh, in register B from register A. So that means no change at all, right? So when you look at all the flags. Um, the sign flag should be a one because one 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 has the most significant bit being a one. The Z flag should be a zero because that obviously is not zero. The overflow flag should be a zero as well because there's no overflow. Thus, uh, the carry flag should be cleared because subtracting zero from 255 does not need to borrow. And then the L flag should be a zero as well. Wait. The, Z, the L flag should be a 1 because negative 1 is, in fact, less than 0. Okay. So, but in this case, on line 4, we have a JSI instruction, which is supposed to branch to label L1 if and only if the sign flag is a 1. So in this case, it really should branch to L1 because, yeah, uh, <clears throat> because the sign flag is a 1. Okay, so what we'll do is we're going to execute this code in the simulator and then we'll see whether it's doing the right thing or not. And then when we spot that it's not doing the right thing, then we'll go to the, um, the C code that generates the microcode slices and try to fix it. Okay, so that's what we'll do at the beginning part of this class. All right, so the whole thing assembled without any problem. So when I look into the RAM file, there's no problem reported here. So now I can just go ahead and go to file and then say download as, and then go to CSV, <clears throat> and then we'll save it as, um, I'm going to say overwrite uh, uh, test.csv, which is what I used earlier. So we'll just replace it. And we go to the Logisim simulator. We'll close this window, okay. and then we'll close this one also. So we'll close um, this window, just so that we know that we are starting from scratch and we are not um, having that potential issue. So we'll say, we'll restart Logisim, go back to the processor file, right there. And then we'll go to the RAM module or RAM component, load image from the temp folder. And the file name that we want to load from is test.csv, not tsv. So we click open, and now we have the program here. So what I want to focus on is the conditional branch instruction, which means you know when the um, instruction register has a value of four three, then I should pay attention. Everything else you know works fine. Okay, there's no problem with the other opcodes. So I want to focus on the instruction register. When it becomes four three, then we have the single clock or single edge, you know, slowly. So control T. Mm -hmm. That's the subtraction instruction. So after the subtraction instruction, now we have four three. Um, this is just a fetch cycle, which means we are ready to, uh, we are already done with the fetch cycle. We are going to decode 
the instruction next. So control T one more time. And then you can see how we have just done the decoding. So the microcode pointer is now pointing to this particular location. <coughs> okay, so we will check a few things. We'll check uh, what is the sign flag. So to know which flag is the sign flag, we have to go to the ALU. And then you scroll all the way to the bottom. And you can see the sign flag is this one. It is bit two of the flags. So we can then zoom out. And the PC Mux Mux should be selecting bit two coming out of the flags register. So we'll click that and see. Yep, so it's selecting two. This is bit two, and it becomes the output, which is PC Mux. So this part is working just fine. We are, we are using the right flag from the flags register uh, to feed to PC Mux. So now that we know PC Mux is a one, then we go back to the program counter, which is right here. The program counter has its own enable uh, port being a one, which means it is ready to be updated. We are going to change the program counter. The question is, how are we changing the program counter? So you look at this input here. This input is all zero. And, and then you look at the multiplexer here. You can see how PC box is a one, which means it's selecting input one to become the output of this multiplexer, which is this one here. And it ha it's coming from another multiplexer, which also has a value of one, which means we're using input one of this multiplexer. And that's coming from RAM. But you can see the location is way off, okay? It is not what we expect it to be. So now the question is, who's driving the address bus? Okay, who is controlling the address bus? So we track down the address bus, and then the address bus is going back to this multiplexer. And you can see how this multiplexer, the selection of this multiplexer is a zero. So it's choosing input zero to feed to the address bus, and that's the problem. In other words, it's using one of the registers in the register bank to drive the address bus, as opposed to when you read the documentation, it is supposed to be coming from the program counter itself. So the bug is basically um, having address mux being a zero instead of a one. So the microcode is incorrect in this case, and that's why it behaves incorrectly. So that's why you know, some people saw their program going all crazy earlier in the, in the early lab, because it is just not doing what it is supposed to. <coughs> so now that we know that the JSI instruction has a problem, and we know the nature of the problem, it is time to go solve the problem. Okay? We want to locate um, that one bit and figure out, okay, which bit are we supposed to change and how do we change it? <coughs> now, you, can, you can change that bit by analyzing where PC uh, address mux is coming from. So you can actually go to, um, go back here. You can see how address mux is bit 17, let me see, it's bit 16. It's bit 16 of the microcode data bunch, uh, bundle of wires. And that in return, okay, is this part here. That is from bit 3 to bit 23. So you add 3 to 16, so that will make it bit 19. So bit 19 of this code is supposed to be a zero, bit 19. Okay, so let's do some calculations here, and we'll try to figure out what is bit 19 of this hexadecimal number. Bit 19 um, is going to be the most significant bit of the hexadecimal digit that's responsible for bit 16 to bit 19, because every hexadecimal digit corresponds to four bits, right? Question? No. Okay. So this is 0 to 3, 4 to 7, 8 to 11, 12 to 16, 16 to 19. As you can see, it is, they're all zeros. So no wonder we have a problem. So one way to fix this problem is go into the ROM right now. Okay, and go to location 430. And here's 430. And then we can just go ahead and change um, this particular zero to an eight. That will change, that will force bit 19 to become a one, and then you can, we can see that the instruction will be fixed at this point. Okay. 
uh, is 1a, okay, I need to write it down because the moment I type, you know, it's going to forget what this part is. So it's going to be 1a, oh, this is the only one that has a problem because the of the entire family of conditional branches, this is the only one that has a 0 instead of an 8, which is correct. So I just have to copy the other one, except the b needs to be an a. Okay, so we have 1a, 8, and then three zeros, and then followed by a 6. And then we can close the window, and oh, okay, that changed the. How come it's going back to that location? Oh, because when I when as I type, <laughs> as I type, that value changed along the way, and then one of the bits got shifted into the uh, microcode pointer reset, and that's why you know it went back to location zero, which is unintentional. But that's the fix, okay? Okay, so now that we know what the problem is, okay, you can you guys can go ahead and fix it yourself. Uh, just make sure that you do this. Go to edit content, go to location four three zero, and change the uh, most significant digit, the most significant zero to an eight. So that's one thing you can do. <clears throat> and what I can do is I'm going to save this file and then re-upload it to the share drive so if you're not really sure what to do with it you can just re-download the processor file so that's that's the other way you can do it huh? it's 1a and then 8 and then 0 0 0 and then a 6 wow I actually remember seven hexadecimal digits right that's that's a first for me Okay, so we go back to here, you know, I'm just going to update it here because I want to make sure that whenever you download it again, it's going to be the correct one. So I'm going to go to file upload and go to my home folder, go to the processor folder, go to here. You can see the modify date, modify time is just, you know, the past minute or so. And then open it, it re-uploads. So now the updated version should be online. Now, just because I changed that and theorized that that is the correct fix doesn't mean it is the correct fix, right? So it's always good to check it again. So we go back to the command line. And let's see, which command line did I use earlier? Yeah, it doesn't matter. As long as I can just find it. Okay. Go back to the processor file. And the first thing we do is we double check, make sure that ROM location is in fact changed.